we're heading out and there's a blanket on the post. How many people have had problems with blankets, right? Blows, scares the horse even though it was on its back before. So, I want Cash. He's probably not seen a blanket on a post. So he's spooking a little bit away from it. So you'll see my hands, hopefully you can see, are very wide because that's going to help me steer. Um, hopefully you can see that. But of course my hands will be lower, but then I can pull left or right. But the wider you keep them, then you can pull out to steer the horse, but not pull back because you don't want to go backwards away from it. You want to go forward, right? So you're going to breathe. Stay relaxed. Make sure your legs, your butt cheeks, everything is relaxed and you're just balancing yourself over the horse. Again, if you squeeze, you're going to scare him more. Now he's looking with his left eye at the blanket. How many people think he's looking off to the right somewhere? He's not. Eyes on side of his head, has to turn his head to actually look. So you're ready with more of your left rein in case he decided, I'm scared. He's already turned right, so of course he's going to turn right and run that direction. So you're ready with your left hand. Otherwise, you're just sitting here. He's not shaking. I can't see his I cannot feel his heartbeat through the saddle. That's when they're um, petrified. So he's not petrified. He just doesn't know what it is. So you take all that in when you're figuring out what you should do next. So I know what I'm going to do with my hands, but I'm going to watch that blanket because if I'm staring at his head and the wind takes up that blanket, he's going to react to the blanket. So I want to know if it starts flapping ahead of time so then I can pull on my left rein to be uh, a couple steps ahead of them. So most people don't think that way, but that's how you want to think. So I'm rubbing them with my left hand because then again, I already have that in my brain that I can pull on that rein. Now he turned his head and he took a big sigh. So he's getting calmer with it. Good boy. But he's still looking at it. And this is fine. Now sometimes they look more with one eye than the other, just like we have dominant eyes, so do they. And it looks different out of their eyes, just like it does out of ours. We, you can see depth with more with one, and your vision's usually better in one than the other. So he's going to use both his eyes. So now he brought his head a little bit lower, so I'm rubbing him again with my left rein, because I'm still ready with my left rein in case he starts to go. Good boy. All right. So now he's just looking straight. Oh, changed his mind. But he's much more relaxed. So even though this is an older horse, we're building up his confidence. So he's a good horse. He tries. I don't need to beat him up unless he was being like a real idiot. Okay, so I'm going to try and take a couple steps forward. My reins are going to be wide. Good boy. Now he wants to touch it. He might jump. So you're always ready if they jump. And then he's like, oh my god, it's just a blanket. Don't tell anybody I spooked at that. You're not going to tell anybody. Did those horses see me? Are they laughing at me? <laughs> so now I'm just going to let him sniff the blanket. Go boy. And then give him a reward for doing it. So I like to give little tiny treats. It's up to you what you do. But he did something good. Now this other horse is coming over like, Hey, idiot, that's my blanket. Why are you touching it? We're like, mm, we're not. We're going to leave. So, well, he is. <laughs> so now, see, he's rubbing his head on it. And he was just afraid of it. So if you give them time, they get over it. All right. Now we're going because all, they're all coming in like children of the corn. Um, so then we're going to move on. We're going to keep going. There's an attack blanket down there. <laughs> Bye. All right. So now we just passed another horse. So what are you going to do? The horse might not want to go out by himself. So you're ready with your legs, your spur, your stick to make him go out. And you're like, I pay a lot of board. We're going, dude. Okay, don't back off. Make sure they go. All right, but he did good with the blanket. Now we'll see what else we see on this trip. So, again, this is a older horse. I can't remember how old Cash is. 13, something like that. Um, you know, he had lots of mileage when he was younger and then had a big break in between. A ton of trails. 
So again, you got to kind of reboot them and uh, get them used to stuff again because and uh, you know that's why horses sitting in pasture are cheaper right because you know they've had some years off or something and uh, we can walk and poop um, because who knows how they're gonna come back and are they gonna be as brave as they were before so that's why, you know, you pay people to do that for you if you're not a good rider because that horse might have been great, in, you know, 20, 20 years ago, <laughs> maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago when he used to be a trail horse. I see a car coming, so I'm just going to wait for it. Um, but Mal, maybe he's had six years off or something happened while he was out in the pasture and the person's not telling you about that. And that's why they're dumping him because he's been sitting there and he's going to pass the vet check now, but not after you work him for months. So, oh, she's not coming this way. So again, sometimes you think you're getting a deal. You're getting a deal, all right, but it's not the, it's not a good deal. So better pay the money, get one that's been working. You know that does okay on the vet check. It doesn't have to pass it with a, you know, flying colors. It's not gonna if it's been worked. Just like you're not gonna pass a vet check. So. You just want to make sure it's not dead lame, it's not got some major issue where it's blind, you know, or a huge heart murmur and you're doing endurance, that would not be good. So just remember that as you're looking at horses. So the ones that have good temperaments, good gait, lots of mileage, they're fit, they've been recently ridden, they're going to cost more, but they're in the end they're worth it. I try to buy the most expensive ones I can afford and then I still put more training on them. But that's why, you know, people are like, why your horse is gate so well? Well, I put the time in, but I also pay a lot of money and people want to buy the horses for what I pay for them. <laughs> and, you know, they think I'm getting a deal. Oh, you must be getting them for $2,500. I don't buy horses that cheap. Mine can cost anywhere from five to eight thousand dollars that, that's me just buying it that's not the vet check the shoes if it needs vaccines or teeth or anything so that's why they cost more because good horses cost money okay I should shut up cash is like please <laughs> so yesterday we did with cash the shoulder in so right now I'm in the center of the road what we're gonna do today is push his hindquarters over. So first they have to know to how to disengage their hindquarters, you know, do it at the barn or in the arena. Or a turn on the forehand, that's the same thing, pushing their hindquarters around, but while their front feet are staying still. And then you can try it at the walk. So what I'm gonna do is try to keep this horse's head straight, and I'm gonna bring my right leg back, and I'm gonna push his hindquarter over. Good boy. Now, I don't know if you can see that in the picture or not. And you might be like, yeah, that looks like a shoulder imp. But that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to push his hind quarter over. Okay. Now we're going to go straight. Good boy. Not easy to do. Walk crooked. Then we're going to try it again. I'm going to try the same direction. Because this is the first time he's had to do this while he's walking. Good. So his hind quarter's over. So his front feet are on that center of the trail, trail the road, but his hindquarters come into the left. So all I'm doing, I try to keep his head straight, but if it's not working out, I might have to pull his head a little to the right to push his hindquarter off my right leg. So I'm going to try it again, keep his head straight, bring my right leg back. If you have a little stick, you can give a little tap, and he brought it over. Okay, what's the purpose? So one, your canter departure. When you canter off, if you bring their hindquarter to the inside, they'll pick up that inside lead. So if I was going to pick up my right lead, I'd bring his hindquarter to the right, ask for the canter, it should help him to get that right lead. So you could do that on trail, you know, so you could practice cantering different leads on trail, make your horse even stronger. And like I said the other day about the kicking horse, you know, if he 
wanted to kick another horse, I could push his hindquarter away from that horse. Or if there's a bike coming and my, the horse likes to kick at bikes, you could push his hindquarter away from the bike, but still get him used to it, but keep that biker safe. Okay, so now we're going to push his hindquarter to the left. So I'm going to try to keep his head straight, bring my left leg back, and there his hindquarter goes to the right. I know it's hard to see. I don't have a drone. I couldn't control one while I'm doing this anyhow. And I'm a one-man show. Right? So, now I just switch my stick. So if I need help, I can back up my left leg. So try to keep his head straight. Bring my left leg back about four inches. Push his hind quarter over to the right. And then with my right leg and rein, I'm trying to hold his head straight. And he's doing it. So again, in the beginning, you're just trying to get him to step a little bit over. They're not going to step like sideways or anything. You just try to get a little bit of the answer and then over time you get it better at better. Yeah, good boy. So you can also use that as protection. Say somebody's messing with you. Somebody's trying to steal your stuff up there in the saddle. You could move that horse's hindquarter around because that's where their power is and keep that person away from you or keep another horse away from you. So he's doing better each day we take him out by himself. He's getting used to more and more stuff. He's getting calmer. Okay, but today we're going to go exploring a little bit. Let's we'll see how that goes. Okay, same trail I did with the other horses. So we know those little tassel things are going to come up on the left. Could spook them, but we're ready for it. Our hands are wide, keeping that horse's head down. And we're at our flat walk, so we're not going to go flying by it, because I might want to go over to it if he's scared. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Oh, well, he looked a little bit. You want to stop? Good boy. Okay, so now he's looking at the road. Good boy. He's not afraid of the tassels. Okay. So off we go, and then we got a pipe up here. Remember, if the horse gets nervous, you breathe out, relax your legs, relax your seat, keep your hands wide. Good boy. So he's looking at it. Good boy. We can let him look for a minute. He's not doing anything bad. You'll see he's on a loose rein right there. We're going to see it on the way back, so we might as well look at it now. So when I'm coming back, you won't have an issue with it. Lots of people pass things one direction. They come back the other way and they go, my horse is an idiot. He went by it the other way and then I came back and he spooked. And it's because he didn't see it out of both his eyes and it looks different. So I always let him look at it or I might walk by it both directions so they can see. Okay. And then he, he walked off himself. He, of course, tried to turn towards home first, but that's a normal thing. <laughs> Who wouldn't go back home? Oh, well, let's check our girth. Okay, so slight incline. We're going to do our flat walk. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'll put you back on the bit. Cancel's blowing. He looked at it a little sideways, but otherwise was fine. 